Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping Yad, and I am back on some Neo 2, and today I wanted to show off an extremely great build that you can use to steamroll the entire game. I wanted to make this video because I know that this game was recently released on the PC, and there's a lot of new players, and it also was released on the PS5, and a lot of people are checking it out. Now, I know that a lot of people will say that this game is a lot like Dark Souls, but here's the thing about this game. This game is a game, in my opinion, that is mainly about builds. If you can have a build, even a simple build, you're going to be better off than just relying on pure skill. I do think that Dark Souls and the different Soulborn games, including Sekiro and all that, is more of a skill thing. Yes, there's builds in that too, but unless you're extremely high level, I don't really think you're ever really all that overpowered in Dark Souls. Where in Neo, if you actually have a pretty decent, well-constructed build, it can help you loads to the point where it can literally carry you through the game even when you're way under-leveled. The gameplay you are watching here is me going through Dream of the Demon where I am so under-leveled because I've been rushing through. Now, I will say that this build, you can actually start to assemble this build about halfway through Dream of the Samurai. Really, to be honest with you, there is no such thing as a build until about the halfway point of Dream of the Samurai. So you will have to get through the game to that point. Maybe you can get some help if you really need it. But once you get to that point, you can start to make this build and basically it will become a cakewalk. And then all you ever have to do is just upgrade the build anytime you get to a new dream. And the good news is that Besides Dream of the Samurai, you do not have to do the main story missions. You can do a bunch of side missions, especially the quick and easy ones. So what you can actually do is you can simply just do like five missions, I believe. It's really quick. Five missions on any new dream, like Dream of the Demon, for example, will unlock the third region. And that is what we need if we want to upgrade this build. And like I said, this build should be able to just steamroll the entire dream to get you to the end game if you want to do that, or if you do want to take the time and enjoy it, you can definitely make this a lot stronger as you play, and you'll level up a lot, and it will be absolutely amazing. Now, the first thing we have to talk about is going to be Dream of the Samurai, because I'm going to be showing you how to set this build up on Dream of the Samurai. Basically, you're going to probably have a rough time for the first half of Dream of the Samurai, because there's really not all that much you can do to make the game a lot easier on yourself, outside of just having someone carry you, or just doing co-op. My recommendation, though, would be to take your time. Just take your time. I know that a lot of people want to rush through. I feel like that's fine. If you want to rush, I get it, I understand. But if you're going to rush, rush through New Game Plus, Dream of the Strong, Dream of the Demon, Dream of the Wise. Because obviously the end game starts once you get to Dream of the Neo, which is your final like playthrough basically. Where on Dream of the Samurai, it's your first playthrough. If you don't know the game all that well, learn the game. Take your time. Level up. Try to get stronger. Because it will help you. I went ahead and I rushed through all of Dream of the Samurai. And I regret it. Just because I didn't use co-op. But I did struggle at times because I was so weak. I wanted to go ahead and practice what I'm going to preach here because I've helped other people before. I gave them recommendations. I've set this build up before for people. And they told me that it's worked great for them. But, I mean, the thing is, is that I've never done it myself. So I wanted to do it myself to see on how it feels and to see how good it was. And it is amazing. But I myself actually struggled in the beginning because there's some main storylines here that are just, man, they can be rough. Like this mission can be rough. The Viper Sanctum, like this can be a rough mission. The boss can be super hard if you are like brand new to the game. And it is what it is, especially if you are under level. So try to, like I said, take your time, do all the missions. And when it comes to doing Dream of the Samurai, your first playthrough, to progress to a new region, you have to do the main storyline missions. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to do the side missions at all. You can technically just do the main storyline missions and that's it. 
But when you talk about any other playthrough, Dream of the Strong, Dream of the Demon, or Dream of the Wise, whatever, or Dream of the Neo as well, you don't have to do the main storyline missions. You can skip them entirely. You can say, you know what, I'm not doing this mission. I don't like doing this mission. I'm just going to skip it. Instead, I'm going to focus on doing side missions. Because when it comes to Dream of the Strong and every other dream, on the right-hand side, the bottom right-hand side, you can see it says Mission Achievement Rate. You have to fill that in if you want to unlock new regions. So an example is, this is Dream of the Strong. I have all regions unlocked. You can see on how it's filled in. If we look at Dream of the Demon, I haven't unlocked a bunch of regions. All I've unlocked is Shadow. But to unlock Shadow, it didn't take like much at all, actually. I believe I just did like a couple side missions. I did like one main storyline mission. I did like maybe a total of five missions. And that went ahead and unlocked the Shadow region, which is important. I'll get to that in a moment. But that's how it's going to work when it comes to making progress. And my main recommendation is just take your time. Now, the other thing I have to say is if you're brand new and you're following this, you want to go ahead and get an Omnial Magic Hairlock. You can only find them from the main storyline missions. If you're taking your time, you'll probably find one just randomly. But the very first one that you can get is actually, I'm showing it now. And it's going to come from the second main storyline mission. And you definitely want to get that because once you have it and you use it, you will unlock an Omnial Magic Point. And that's going to be the first time you're going to get an Omnial Magic Point. And what you want to do with that is you want to go ahead and put that into the Purification Talisman. Because that's going to allow you to buff your weapon with Purification. Purification is extremely good because it can apply to enemies super, super quick. doesn't matter if they're yokai enemies or if they're human enemies. It will apply to them. And basically, what our build is going to be focused on mainly is what we're going to be doing is trying to apply two different elements onto the enemies. Purification is always going to be one. We're going to have this as a weapon buff. That way, we can go ahead and apply purity to the enemy. And then, as long as we can apply any other element, fire, lightning, water, we can then combine the two elements together. And that's going to give us a status ailment on the enemy called confusion. Confusion is going to make the enemy take a lot more damage. It's going to make it so that the enemy's stamina bar will absolutely get destroyed. And it just will make the entire game a lot easier if we abuse the confusion status ailment. So there are ways that we can do that. And we are going to be doing that with this build. Now, what we need to talk about first is what you're going to want to do. Because once you have the purity talisman, and you're using it, you're going to be unlocking a ton of Omnial Magic Points because you're getting proficiency. Now, if you ever want to check your proficiency, by the way, you can go to Status, and then you can hit R1, and that will take you to your proficiency screen, and you can check all of your proficiency. But you definitely want to get your Omnial Magic proficiency up, and of course, you want to get your Weapon proficiency up as well. And Ninja proficiency, you can kind of work on that, but there's going to be one ninja thing that we're going to be using for the build that's important. But I'm also going to be pointing out that if you can, you can actually use a little bit of ninja early on. So the ninja that I would try to get. Now, first of all, I will say what you can do is you can go ahead and just get this, which is poison for your weapon. If you're using this, this can get you some proficiency, just like the purification weapon buff will get you proficiency for magic. This will give you some ninja proficiency. But what we want to work towards is we want to actually get one of these feathers. Now, it doesn't really matter which one of the feathers you want to use. The best one, in my opinion, is the fire one. Because if you actually just look, you can see like three like homing fireballs that will like go out and go to the enemy. And that will light the enemy on fire a lot. Remember, what we want to do is we want to go ahead and try to apply two different elements to any strong enemy or boss. So if we can apply fire with this, and then we have our purity talisman to apply purity, that will be two, and then we will get the confusion status ailment onto the enemy or the boss. So this is something you can do to help you get some more proficiency for your ninja, 
because the thing that we want to work towards getting eventually is going to be quick change. This is great. This will save your life. Basically, you put this on, and then if you die, you come back, and it's awesome. So, I mean, that's basically it. You do need to get, I believe, the Way of the Ninja Veteran Dojo Mission. Now, the reason I'm talking about proficiency at all is because of the different dojo missions. So let me go ahead and show you that now. But you will be unlocking these as you're going through the game and you're doing some of the main storyline missions. So an example is the Way of the Ninja Adept. I believe you need to do this if you want to get the quick change scroll. So that is something that is important. But the most important one above everything else is going to be the Way of the Omnial Veteran. This will be huge because some of the best magic will be locked behind this. And also, I will say the way of the warrior adept is important, which will basically just, it really just comes down to your weapon proficiency. And also the way of the warrior veteran is also important. So you want to unlock these missions. But let me go ahead and point out why the way of the Omnio veteran is so important. And you will unlock that when you clear the very first mission in the fourth region. This is Dawn. And the very first mission here is actually called Prevailing Waters. Once you've cleared this mission, you will unlock the Way of the Omnial Veteran Dojo mission, which you want to do right away. Now, the reason why that's so important is because we will get the familiars. We will unlock these. The familiars are extremely good. You have your lightning, you have water over here, and you also have fire, which is at the top. Now, all of them are good. I will definitely recommend mainly lightning and water, because when it comes to applying fire, we can use that feather from the ninja tree I showed, but also later on, we're going to get a soul core, and that soul core will allow us to apply fire really easily. So basically, we'll have everything covered. We'll have lightning with the familiar. We'll have water with the familiar. We have purity with the talisman to give us a weapon buff. And we will have fire from our soul core when we use that. So we can easily apply any element we want. And the main strategy will always be to try to combine two elements together to weaken the enemy. That way we can go ahead and just take them out. It really will make the game a lot easier if we do that. Now, another thing that we want to go ahead and try to get eventually, which will take a while, will be the Mystic Art. Now, the Mystic Art we want for Omnial Magic will be Awakening. We want to use this one. It allows us to cast our magic faster, which is great, especially for our familiars, because we want to be able to do this really quickly. That way, we can just like run up to the boss, apply water, attack the boss, apply purity, and now we have Confusion. And we can go to town and just destroy the boss or the enemy. Okay, so I definitely would recommend Awakening from the Mystic Art. Now, I am going to quickly talk about some of the magic that you want to try to work towards getting. Okay, I'm not exactly sure on like which dojo missions you need to clear for any of these. But the Carnage Talisman, when it comes to getting a attack boost, this is not bad. This is something to eventually get. I would not get this early though. This would be like the last thing on my list, honestly. The Arch Yokai Talisman is also good, and I would recommend getting it eventually. But with the Switchglaive, that's going to be our main weapon, by the way. I haven't talked about it yet, but the Switchglaive will be our main weapon. And basically, there is a buff that you can do with the Switchglaive that will give you the effect of the Arch Yokai Talisman. So it's up to you if you want to get this or not. But one of the most important things we got to get is the Extraction Talisman. You want to get this as soon as you can. What this does is that it allows us to get Amarita whenever we attack the enemy. That is extremely important, mainly for survivability. It is a defense thing. There is something called life recovery Amarita absorption. So whenever we absorb Amarita, we get our life back. And with this build, we're going to have a lot of that. And it's going to make us practically invincible. Obviously, I already talked about this. But Purification Talisman is extremely good. You want to max all of this out, by the way. If you look, you'll see that all the ones that have like the gold, like little ring around it, that means they're maxed out. So definitely max these out. 
It's going to reduce the cost and it's going to allow you to equip more if you want to. Another good one will be the Sloth Talisman. Now, once again, this is kind of optional. You don't have to use it, but it will slow the enemy and it will be extremely good against bosses. It can definitely make it so a lot of bosses will be a lot easier. Another extremely important and good talisman to get is the Barrier Talisman. This is great. This is going to give us an amazing amount of key recovery speed and also it will automatically dispel the yokai realms that the enemies will leave this is amazing this is definitely in my opinion like the best buff in the whole game so definitely get that obviously you want to get your familiars like i said lightning and water these are extremely good and then the other thing you definitely got to go and get is going to be this because this is going to increase our omnio magic capacity and it's going to increase it by five. So definitely go and get this as well because that is huge. And when it comes to the build, you want it to at least get 30 magic. At least. No matter what weapon you choose to use, you don't have to use the weapon I recommend. I will basically talk about that a little bit. But I'm telling you right now, I definitely would say use a weapon that scales with magic. So your options really are going to be Switchglaive, which I think is the best for this. And then the second will be Split Staff, which is a new weapon. Everybody loves Split Staff. You could use that too. I mean, that's fine. It scales with magic. And basically, we're going to be heavily focusing on our magic stat. That's the reason why, you know, those weapons are good. And that's why we're using them. Now, let me quickly show you like the way that I, you know, set up my magic. That way you'll know. Now, first of all... For my ninja, I'm just using quick change. Quick change, that's it, okay? Now, like I said, for a long time I was using like the feather and I was using this to like help me light some enemies on fire and I was getting proficiency for my ninja that way. But once I was able to actually get the quick change scroll, I went ahead and just put this on and now I just use this. This will save your life. It is extremely, extremely good. Now, obviously we are using purification talisman. This is our weapon buff. We got to have that. We will be using two sloth talismans. And by the way, I'm using two purification, two sloth, three barrier. I'm using two extraction and I'm using three lightning and three water. Technically, you could go ahead and just use two lightning, two water, or you can maybe do like three water, two lightning. And you could go ahead if you wanted to and throw on the Carnage Talisman. That way you do a little bit more damage. It's up to you on how you want to like, you know, do it. This is the way I do it. This is the way I would probably recommend it. Because having like this many familiars means that throughout the whole level, if we come across a strong enemy, we can easily just go ahead and use our familiar, apply lightning or water, then attack the enemy with our weapon, apply purity, get the confusion ailment, and we should have no problem from there, okay? Now, remember, you will unlock the familiars once you have done the fourth region mission, which is Prevailing Water, the very first main story mission. And once you've done that on Dream of the Samurai, what I would recommend is to go back to Shadow, and then there's going to be some missions, which are one-on-one, -on -one single-player missions, which are just boss battles, and you can farm these missions. Now, by far, the best mission to farm is going to be this one up here. This is Horns on Head, Dragonfly in Hand. This is a spear mission, basically. It is the Warrior of the East. Farm him for his armor, okay? You want to get his armor. If you can get his smithing text, that would be awesome. But if you can't get his smithing text, that's fine. Just get his armor and equip his armor because his build, his set, is super good. This game is all about builds, okay? And the thing is, is that this build we're using is going to be a simple build. And the reason why a simple build is important is because we can easily make this super quickly. So the reason why that is so, so crucial is because, remember, this is the third region. This is Shadow. So all we have to do is whenever we get New Game Plus, Dream of the Strong, we do a couple missions on the first two regions, and they don't even have to be the main storyline missions. We unlock Shadow, and instantly, we can go ahead and start farming this mission. Taking this guy out, getting his armor, 
and then equipping the new version of his armor, the stronger version of his armor. And once we have like it done, we have made our simple build and we can then say, okay, now it's time to go and do all the other missions and unlock all the regions. And then once you get the dream, actually not the dream region, the afterglow region, once you unlock this region, all you have to do is you have to go and do the mission, the eye of the beholder. And once you've beaten this mission, that will unlock one, the Azakani Magatama, and two, the next dream. So you'll unlock Dream of the Demon. And then once again, you go and you do some missions. Like in my case, I did some side missions. I did like one main story mission. And I think I did like a mission here. And then boom, unlocked Shadow. And now that I have Shadow, I can go ahead and farm this mission. And by farming this mission, I'm getting like way stronger versions of his armor. And that will help me power myself up and then I can go ahead and run through Dream of the Demon. Because honestly, when you're using confusion and you're applying the elements the way I am, I am not having any trouble at all. Even though I'm so, so under level. I'm like, I don't even know what level I am right now. I am level 191. And I'm doing like some of these missions and they're like way higher level than me, you know? Way, way higher level than me. And yet, I'm not really struggling at all. I'm killing the enemies super quickly. I am not dying. So, that's just because my build, my simple build, because it's easy to do. All I got to do is farm this mission. My simple build is that strong, where I can just go ahead and speed run the rest of these dreams. But on Dream of the Samurai, yes, you do want to take your time. Now, I do want to quickly show you what his armor does, obviously. And why it's good. It is good because of attack bonus constitution. The five piece. You don't even need the six piece. So don't worry about that. But the five piece is good because of that attack bonus constitution. Now remember, my recommendation is to use the switch glaive. I think this is your best weapon for this build by far. It scales with magic. It scales with constitution. Both of those stats are going to be nice for us. We are using magic, so we're leveling up magic. Plus, constitution gives us more health, and we're using the Warrior of the East armor, so it's perfect. We'll get a lot of attack from basically this setup. No problem. Now, if you decide you want to use the Split Staff just because you think it's a better weapon or it's cooler, whatever, that's fine. Mainly focus on magic. You can go ahead and still use the Warrior of the East setup, and you can have a secondary weapon of a Switchblade. So you can technically use either one if you want to. It's up to you. But that is something that you can do. Now another thing I want to point out is the Yazakani Magatama. You will get this when you beat the Eye of the Beholder on New Game Plus. It's guaranteed. So on Dream of the Strong, you will get it guaranteed. You can get it randomly. It's RNG. It can happen. If you do, that's great. If you don't, Honestly, I wouldn't go out of my way to go and get this. It's not that important. One thing I will say, though, on your accessories that is super nice if you can get it or you can put it on there by tempering, which I will talk about that as well, is actually extended elemental weapon. This will make our purification talisman last a lot longer. You might not think it would because you think, okay, is purity element or is it like just talking about fire and lightning and water no purity counts so you're talking about a 50 percent duration bonus for our weapon buff that is extremely nice and i definitely would recommend that so it's something to think about but yes this armor is extremely good it's also heavy armor so that's really good i did refashion this so it looks different but heavy armor will definitely make you a lot more tanky having high constitution and having heavy armor will definitely make you a lot more tanky. Now, a couple things to also point out. On the Yazakani, which basically on any Magatama, Yazakani Magatama or the normal Magatama, you can get Life Recovery and Marita Absorption. That's very, very good. Remember, I talked about that because of the Extraction Talisman. Same with the Chest Piece. The Chest Piece can get Life Recovery and Marita Absorption. Now, once you actually get Max Familiarity, which is only a thing when you're talking about divine items 
are above. But once you get max familiarity, the life recovery amarita absorption goes from 16 to 32. So that's actually really good because every hit we're getting almost 50 from this alone. So that's awesome. Now another thing that we can point out though is actually our clan. And this is very important. There's only going to be really one clan you should join when you are just starting out. And it's this clan, the Toyo clan. Because what this clan does is that it gives you Amarita loot bonus. What it does is that whenever you defeat an enemy, you have a chance of doubling the amount of experience you get for defeating that enemy. And when you max this clan out, you get a 25% chance of that happening. If you want to know how do you level up your clan or max your clan out, all it requires is stay in the clan for like a little while and I guess get glory? You get glory from doing co-op or you can donate items like those are ways of getting glory. But basically what's going to happen is your position will change. It will change to elder. Once you get elder, you're done. Even if you switch your clan, you'll always be an elder of every clan. It's a really nice thing in Neo 2 that they did that whenever you leave your clan, it doesn't actually matter. You'll keep like that elder status for every clan. So if you stay in a clan long enough and if you're doing co-op and you're getting glory or if you're donating, you will be able to go ahead and get that elder status and you'll have a better bonus. Now, speaking of a better bonus, the second effect on this is super good. It's life recovery Amarita absorption. And when you max out the clan, it's 50. That's a lot, especially early in the game when your health isn't like huge. So you're talking about just from like my little setup alone that you've seen. I'm getting a lot of life recovery Amarita absorption. And that's not even like all of it because there's one more thing I haven't actually pointed out. And this is from the DLC. So you can only get these soul cores from like the first or second or third DLC. But once again, I would probably recommend to take your time with your first playthrough. Do all the DLCs. Do every mission. Go ahead. But this is Nepepo. This is a soul core. This gives you life and it gives you life recovery amarita absorption. So yes, I have a lot of life recovery amarita absorption. It's over 100 and that just means every hit I'm getting so much life back. It is super, super good. And also for this build, this is what I would kind of recommend for your soul core setup. It will be Impa Dadara. This is a very good soul core for knocking the yokai enemies out of key there is another one it's called kazuki it's one of the bosses in the game that's another good soul core for knocking the enemies out of their key and that's just a very good thing to have all the time obviously nepepo is great the main thing about nepepo outside of the awesome things it gives you the life the life recovery amarita absorption nepepo will give you a damage buff it's actually a 30 percent damage buff it doesn't last too long, but if you ever need like a damage boost, you can use Nepepo to give you a nice little damage boost. And that damage boost will stack with other damage boosts. An example is you can use the Carnage Talisman, then you can use the Nepepo Soul Core, and you're talking about like a 50% damage bonus from that. I mean, that is huge. So Nepepo is an extremely good Soul Core. The downside to it, though, is that it's going to make it so it's going to cost more key to attack. So that's kind of a big downside. Also, whenever you get hit, you'll take more key damage from getting hit. So Nepepo has some downsides to it, but that 30% damage buff is just too good. And finally, Kasha. This is the best soul core like in the entire game, in my opinion. I love it for the damage, but the main reason I like it is because it will consistently light the enemies on fire. There are a lot of missions you can do to get this soul core. The first one that you'll be doing to get it, and remember, we're using lightning and water familiar. We have purity, talisman, so we have all that covered for our elements. Fire is the only one that we don't have covered completely. But Kasha, that will cover us when it comes for fire. But from the Dawn region, one of the missions here is the frenzy blaze this mission at the end that's how you get kasha and then there's like a ton of other missions where she just appears as a boss and you can get more soul cores from her but in my opinion that's definitely the setup that you want 
And if you're wondering about the Guardian Spirit, the Guardian Spirit that I am using, and speaking of life recovery and marine absorption, I just realized something. My secondary Guardian Spirit is actually O, which gives life recovery and marine absorption. It's actually 15 when it's your secondary. So as you can see, I got a lot of that life recovery and marine absorption. Definitely would recommend that as well. My primary spirit, though, is Ho. Now, the thing is, is that you will get Ho and you will get O from doing the final main mission from the first DLC and from the second DLC. And once you have done both of them, you will unlock ho which this is, in my opinion, the best guardian spirit for this build. Now, obviously, you would want to get what you see there, which is the melee damage versus purified enemy. That is super good because you get purification accumulation, which allows you to apply that purity buff faster. You get minus damage taken versus yokai. That's super good. But that melee damage is also super good. So you would want to get the stats basically for that. And the calming breath is not bad either. It gives you some health regeneration when you're out of combat. It is just really nice. Basically, this is the best spirit. But here's the problem. Here's the deal. I kind of recommend Ho. Now, the reason why I recommend Ho is because it gives you luck. That's really it. If you And you get uh, Amarita. That's good too. So when you're just going through the game, you know, and you're trying to like go through the dreams, I think this is the best one. Plus, it's a brute spirit, which the brute spirit, in my opinion, is the easiest one to use. It just is. It's super, super easy. So I would say the better spirit is ho -Oh. This is the way to go. It's a phantom. It's the better one for just the build overall. But if you're talking about farming, or if you're just talking about going through the game, I think ho is probably your best bet. So that's what I would recommend for the spirit for the build. And when it comes to the weapon as well, I should bring this up. The weapons I recommend are going to be the ones that will imbued purity. They come with that. So even if your talisman, it will wear off, you don't have it anymore, you still have the you know ability to go ahead and put purity on the enemy. So this is definitely like what I would recommend. And in fact, I'm pretty sure you can force these like fairly quickly. I don't remember, I don't think you need to find like the smithing text, for example, if you want to go ahead and forge the evil crusher one. I'm pretty sure I was able to do that like just no problem. Another thing too, by the way, this is like for the new players who might not know this, but you can actually forge divine gear. Once you get the option to actually get divine gear, you basically have to beat Dream of the Samurai. Once you've beaten Dream of the Samurai, the final mission is always going to be Eye of the Beholder. That mission I showed from Afterglow. Once you've beaten that, then you can actually go ahead and you can get Divine Gear. And you can forge it by, when you go to Forge, okay, so here's all the materials. I have to go over to Forge. If I hit Triangle, you'll see down there on the bottom, it says Divine Fragment. I can hit Triangle and I can use Divine Fragments. Just using one if you look at the top, you'll see it gives it a 49% chance of coming out divine. That's pretty good. If you use 10, it's an 86% chance. So it's up to you on what you want to do. I normally would just say do one because you have a pretty high chance. It's like a 50-50 chance. Is it going to come with, you know, is it going to be divine or is it not going to be divine? And yeah, so if you want to get divine gear, that's a way to do it. Another thing as well, which is important for new players, is... Let's go ahead and just talk about the blacksmith. I mean, let's just do that now, right? So, first of all, soul matching will become a thing once you get to dream of the strong. And soul matching is important because it's it seems like it's complicated, but it's really not. Essentially, what you have to do is soul match. Is You will have to have gold or money to do it, which I'm kind of broke right now because I've been doing a lot of soul matching. But I'll give you an example. You will take like items that are the same plus value because when you get divine items, you'll notice they will be like level 170 plus 11. So it's like, okay, you know, what does that mean? Well, we can soul match it to be higher because this one is plus 12. To do that, we have to select the item that we want to like level up. And in this case, it's going to be the helmet. And now I'm going to go ahead and select another item that is the equal value. 
So it's plus 11, just like this is plus 11. And if you look on the right side, the finished form, it is now plus 12. So there you go. Now we have plus 12. So that is something you have to constantly do. Basically, the way I always describe it to people, and I try to, I hope it's not confusing, but it's literally just, you take a plus one with another plus one, you can get a plus two. You take a plus two with another plus two, you'll get a plus three. If you take a plus two and you put a plus one into it, you'll get nothing. You'll get a plus two. So it has to be equal, okay? It's got to be. Or if you take a plus two and you put a plus 10 into it, it will be a plus three. That's how it's going to work. Now, unfortunately, this might confuse like newer players, but you'll eventually get the orange gear. Once you get the orange gear, you can take a plus 50 orange and put it into a plus one green or really a plus one orange as well. It doesn't matter, but you can take a plus one. Um, and if you put a level of a plus 50 orange into it, then you'll actually get like a plus 20. It will like average out, but only with the oranges, the greens. It doesn't work like that. So that is something. Tempering is also important. Tempering, you're going to need umbracite to do this, but you know, there are certain things you want to temper. An example is, and an easy one to temper, is the extended elemental weapon. So basically, you just have to use umbracide to do that. My recommendation, and I would say this, unless you need money, if you're broke, you have no gold, if that happens, then you should start selling items. Sell items, you know, especially all of the lesser rarity items. That's fine. But Throughout your playthrough, I would definitely recommend going to dismantle items. So the way that you always want to do it is you can hit the touchpad on the PlayStation and you'll see it will say, check all. Well, if I move it once over to the right, it will say all of the purples are below. So in my case, I have divines. Once you have divines, the purples don't matter anymore. So I would basically say, yes, I want to check all of the purples and then it will basically let me go ahead and do that. It will. I can then hit like X and dismantle all of the purples. I don't have any right now, but that's the idea. Same with the armor. So an example is this is all weapons. You have the spear and the katana. It's all weapons. And if you go to like the left with L1, you have the helmet and you have the pants. That's all of the armor. So I do the same thing. That's the touchpad. Go over, get rid of all the purples are below. And this is actually everything. So you could technically use this. This is all weapons. This is all armor. Same thing. All the purples are below. But you're going to get a lot of stuff, like a lot of crafting stuff while doing that. But one of the most important ones that you'll get is actually in the tools. So we go to forge and we go to tools. We can actually see you can craft umbracite. Okay. Now in my case, because I've been dismantling a lot, I have 1,350 Umbracite Fragments. So what I can do is I can actually forge 135 Umbracite. So if I want to temper, if I go to temper, and then I select like my item I want to temper, I can just go ahead and cycle through everything by just using my normal Umbracite. Yes, I'll be wasting a lot of normal Umbracite while doing it, but eventually... I can actually find what I'm looking for. Now, all the other Umbracite, those are rare. You get them from beating the main story missions. You get them from doing the Twilight missions. But they are limited. You can also forge them, but it is more complicated. Now, one of the nice things they did add in, though, which is something you can take advantage of maybe later on, is you can forge Divine Umbracite by using, which I can't even do it yet. I think it's a way of the wise thing. But you can forge Divine Umbracite by using the Umbracite Fragments and Divine Fragments as well. So you can basically use them to just get Divine Umbracite. It's a nice thing. I would definitely recommend maybe doing that if you need some Divine Umbracite. So that's tempering. That's also very important. Now the other thing that's important is remodeling. Let's talk about that. Once again, this is mainly just for the Divine Items. And this is for whenever the items have a plus value. So it has to have at least a plus one. If you get an item and you try to remodel it and it doesn't let you, it's probably because that item is not a plus one yet. So you would have to soul match it so that it can become a plus one. 
But what you can do is you can go ahead and go to remodel. And for weapons, this is, this is something unique with weapons. You can double remodel. Now to double remodel, you'll see that you have your standard, okay? And then you have one, two, and three. Now if we actually look, we can see our scaling. So one, if you look there, that's constitution. Two is skill, three is magic. So what we can do is we can double remodel so that we will primarily scale with constitution and magic. So to do that on the PlayStation, we're gonna hit triangle, which is going to leave a check mark. Then we can go down to magic, and now you'll notice it will say B plus, A minus, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. We will confirm it by hitting X, and then it will say, do we want the specialization three and specialization one? Yes, we do. Boom. Now that item will have a B plus constitution scaling and an A minus magic scaling. So that will make that be a lot stronger because our stats will be magic and constitution. Now armor wise, you can do that. It's up to you. I mean, really your best option in terms of defense is making it more heavy. But if you make it more heavy, it is going to require more stamina if you want to not be really fat and overweight. And the higher you actually level up, the more plus values. So right now it's plus 11, for example. If that was plus 50, it would be a lot heavier if we make it heavy. But the reinforce option will make it heavy. The refine option will make it require more stats, which I don't have 22 strength so i just i can't really do it so i would say your best bet is to just leave it standard until you get to the end game once you're at the end game you can start really messing with the remodel option for your armor and stuff but right now like as you're just playing through i would kind of just leave it standard um and that is the same with refine by the way if this was like a plus 50 instead of a plus 11 like later on when you get to dream of the neo it would require like probably 35 strength. So that goes up. The Both of them, they will both go up the more plus value you add to it. So I hope that kind of explains Blacksmith. And this is just something when I talk to a lot of new players, and I've talked to a ton of them, I notice that, you know, they just, they don't understand the Blacksmith. And I try to help them and explain it to them. But I know even explaining it to them can be confusing. And I think that showing people a lot of times is the best way of actually trying to get them to understand some of these things. Now, something I quickly want to just bring up and actually talk about is what if you don't want to use the switch glaive or the split staff? You're just totally against it. You might want to use another weapon. And I will go ahead and use the fist as an example. So. The fists are a lot of fun, and I know a lot of people might want to use them. But if you actually take a look, you'll notice that they scale with heart, strength, and dexterity. So obviously, that conflicts with our little build. We have constitution, magic, and we have some stamina and stuff, because you will need stamina to equip heavy armor, okay? This is something else. I'm going to talk about this just real quick, because it's something I notice a lot of new players, they make this mistake. Try to make sure your equipment weight is under 70%. If you look at the bottom left, you'll see B agility, and you'll see that green 68.9%. Try to make sure that you are underneath 70%. And that's at all times. I notice a lot of newer players will equip like heavy armor when they do not have the stamina stat to do so. And then they put themselves in the yellow C agility range. And when that happens, you're going to use a lot of key to run, to attack. You're just so slow. And people will get frustrated because they just never have key to attack. That is why. So you always want to try to avoid that if possible. For the Warrior of the East, having the 39 stamina and the 12 strength, that is the requirement to equip it means we are underneath that 70% equipment weight. So that is extremely important at all times, something to pay attention to. And basically, if you want to know the rest of my stats, I have the 10 dexterity for the quick change scrolls. 
I have nine courage. That's for the Yazakani Magatama to equip it. And then everything else I've been putting into magic and constitution. My goal is to, of course, max them out at 99 for now. And then I'll probably put some points into heart. Because my heart is low, but the thing is, I don't really need the key. I just don't. And that's because I'm only really doing a couple moves, which I will talk about. I got to talk about the skills for the Switch Glaive. But let me now just bring this up about the, the different weapon. So let's say you want to do the fist. I would definitely say that if you're going to do that, I would not recommend the Warrior of the East armor. Instead, the armor I would actually farm would be the Point of No Return. There is an armor set called the Crime of Petricide. It's actually the Jin Ryu's armor. And the set bonus is the Crime of Petricide. It's not the best set ever, but it's decent. It's got some nice things going on for it. And I would definitely go ahead and farm that, use that. And then if you want to like level up strength, yeah, level up strength. I would still recommend magic though, obviously. You want to get some magic, at least 30 magic. But yeah, you could focus on a little bit of stamina. So you're underneath the 70%, a lot of strength, maybe some heart, and you should be good to go. And yeah, don't go for constitution. Now, if you wanted to mainly focus on stamina, maybe you really like the axe or odachi. The obsidian armor is extremely good for the axe and odachi. It will heavily focus on stamina scaling. Now, the odachi on Dream of the Samurai this is not going to be a good set for you. It is a seven piece set. This one is a six piece. This one is a six piece. But to see the big difference with the Warrior of the East is that even though it's a six piece, you only need five. You just need five. And if you have the Yazakani with the minus one, you only need four. You know, and that's including if you wanted to put the weapon on. So it's a really nice thing about Warrior of the East. But yeah, this is six and this is seven. So once you get the Yazakani and you get the minus one, then you can go ahead and not have the sword equipped. And instead, you can put a, an Odachi on. And then with the Odachi, your scaling would mainly be stamina and strength. And then, of course, have some magic as well. So that would be my recommendation for just some different options. You know, like I said, Obsidian, I really love it. I like it a lot for Axe and Odachi, but every other weapon... If you want a really quick and simple build, because remember, that's what this is all about, is quick and simple builds to get you through the game. I think that this guy's armor is really good. And for Dream of the Neo, I would say when you get there, I would probably get this guy's armor regardless, like for every build. I would stop using the Warrior of East for Dream of the Neo. Now, that's more complicated, but the reason why, just like the short answer would be that on Dream of the Neo, there is like extra bonuses you will get for the armor. And the extra bonus you get for this guy's armor is actually 20% melee damage when your weapon is awakened. And corrupted weapons are very powerful. So my recommendation for Dream of the Neo when you get there is go and get this guy's armor and then go and get a corrupted weapon, a yokai weapon. And if you do that, you will be pretty strong. I definitely think that's a very good little like setup like right away. Because when you get to Dream of the Neo, you're going to be weak. You will be really, really weak. So, now let's actually talk about the skills that I like for the Switch Glaive. Now, when you talk about the Dojo missions, you will have to do at least the Adept Dojo mission for the Way of the Warrior. But Empty Retribution, this is an amazing skill. Mainly for just applying purity extremely quickly. This is the skill I'm always spamming. I'm using all the time. Cyclone is another really good one. It's extremely good at applying purification. Now, Cyclone 2 is also extremely good. You got to get the timing down, but it's actually really easy once you learn the timing. But the thing is, is that this one, I believe you have to have the Way of the Warrior Veteran to unlock that. And same thing with this. I think you have to have Veteran for the second level of this. But this is another pretty good skill that you could use. You just get right up on the enemy, you do this, and it can do some pretty nice little damage to the enemy. There's also another move you could use instead of using this one, and that move is called Arc of Chaos. You can get that if you want by farming the third DLC, First Main Storyline Mission. 
basically it can be tough to get any boss skill it can take forever it's all rng it's total luck and of course you would want to stack as much luck as possible really really important stuff but what you would do on this mission if you were serious about trying to get arc of chaos for the switch glaive is you would basically get to where the boss is the actual boss and then you would go ahead and unlock the shortcut there's a shortcut that's right there and then you run back to the shrine that will save the game you then run to the boss you fight the boss you kill the boss if the boss does not drop what you're looking for either the smithing text maybe if you're looking for something like that or the boss skill you go ahead and you return to the main menu because whenever you return to the main menu the game will not save and then you can just go ahead and repeat that over and over again until eventually the boss will drop the skill. That way you don't have to run through the whole level. This level is long. It takes a long time to run through. So that's why you farm it that way. Also, another quick little tip. Let's talk about luck. And let's talk about teacups. Because this is something I noticed with a lot of new players I've been talking to. They have problems. So one thing is, every once in a while, you need to go to the hidden tea house and you need to appraise your tea utensils. That's really important. And then what you want to do is after you've done that, always go to your hut, okay? And then you want to go to a remodel hut and you want to go to tea utensils and you want to go ahead and select use recommended placement. And you will notice that some stats will change. Now in my case, the luck stat is 59. But my other stats are, you know, you see what they are. But if I click it, look, the luck stat is not changing, but my T utensil drop rate is changing. So you know what? I'm going to change that because why not? But every single time, always do this. And you can select some other options. Like let's say you just want higher luck. You can go with this. If you want like more gold, which I don't recommend, you can go with that. If you want like more tea utensil drop rate you can go with that as well so this is all your options this is something that like you know i'll talk to somebody and they'll be like on literally dream of the demon halfway through and they haven't messed with their tea utensils ever not once never done it and i'm like okay you know that's why you have no luck that's why you're not getting any drops ever is because you don't have any luck you need that luck stat it is extremely important now, real quick, I'm going to also talk about the split staff. Even though on this playthrough, I haven't really used it much. I do want to point this out. Changing ways, this is a skill. This is extremely good. Use this skill. Definitely. It's amazing on the split staff. Also, the dragon dance. This is extremely good as well. And then the other one is unruly revolution. This is good against humans. Against humans, this is your go-to move. Against like yokais and stuff, changing ways is extremely good. And anytime like an enemy is knocked down or out of key, that's when you definitely should use Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance is awesome. So those are like the main really good skills for the split staff. And if you use those, I mean, you'll just destroy everything. Now I'm trying to think like, what else can I go ahead and talk about or show? You know what I will do real quick? I'm going to go ahead and show you, let me make it Dream of the Strong, because I do actually want to make this a little bit quicker, but I'm going to go ahead and show you how to farm, like one of these human bosses. You know what? Maybe I will make it Dream of the Demon, why not? Because I, I am pretty much done when it comes to farming, and the reason why I'm done is because all of my armor is actually like plus 10. That's the goal, because basically, like I was saying before, is what you want to do is whenever you unlock the next dream. So in my case, next time would be Dream of the Wise. When I unlock Dream of the Wise, I need to do it again. Now, on Dream of the Wise, you can get the orange drops. I would not tell you that you, you shouldn't, like, worry too much about the orange drops. They're better, but I wouldn't, like, sit there and farm nonstop. You don't need to. But, like, whenever I do unlock Dream of the Wise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretty much do some missions on the first two regions, unlock shadow, and then I'm going to go and farm this guy again. That way I can get like higher, like plus value stuff because you can soul match to level up stuff, 
but it's expensive. You're going to blow through all your gold. There's a reason why, like, if you look, I have 1,500 gold right now. It's because I've been leveling stuff up. It's just our soul matching, and I have blown through, like, all my gold. So now I have to sell stuff. But I'm going to show you, like, essentially how you would want to go about farming this mission. Now, remember, I'm using Ho. Ho will give us luck. We have our luck from our tea utensils. I could actually put the luck bringer talisman on. That's another option. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use up all of my stuff, okay? Like all my buffs. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the water familiar on. Then I'm going to shoot him in the head. The human bosses, you can shoot him in the head to knock him down. We're going to stab him when he gets up. Let's hit him with the sloth. Now I'm going to go ahead and use unruly revolution, okay? And now he's confused, okay? Oh, I should have actually done Cyclone 2 there, but whatever. And we are going to continue. Let's go ahead and try to do Cyclone 2. All right, knock him down. As you can see, we're keeping him locked up. Let's go ahead and do that. Watch out for that thrust move. I mean, that's his, absolutely, that's his best move he's got, okay? That's Cyclone 2 there. That's like the little grab from it, all right? Now, another thing we can do is we can actually use Kasha. That's our fire, so if we ever want to apply fire, we can using that. And, I mean, just look at me own him, you know? I'm super underleveled, remember that. Like, if this was Dream of the Strong, I would just kill him instantly. But, that's an easy way of farming the boss to get the better drops, basically. And then once I have the better drops, like I do right now, I can easily run through Dream of the Demon. And it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, if I really wanted to, I could sit here and, you know, try to level up. That would be smart because I would be a lot stronger if I actually did level up. But if I'm trying to, like, just get to the end game, I mean, that's kind of important. But, I mean, basically, this is the build, guys. This is the build. This build should absolutely carry you through. If you're doing confusion, I definitely think the Switchglaive is the best just because of the constitution, the magic. I have so much life recovery and Marita absorption on this build. It is insane, okay? And that was something I could have done there too. I could have used Nepepo to give me the uh, damage bonus as well. The damage bonus from this is awesome. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, this build is super strong. This is definitely, in my opinion, the best build, I think, to get through the game quickly. And don't worry about mid-maxing either. I mean, that's something I, I could tell you to do. The only thing I would try to do, like in terms of tempering my armor, is getting that life recovery on the chest piece. Because, yeah, you could sit here, you could temper all your armor, try to get it to have, like, really good special effects. You could do that. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it just because you're going to need to do it again once you get to the next dream. And I think it's just it's a waste, honestly. Now, the weapon, maybe, yes, because the most important thing on the weapon is actually going to be you do want to get attack bonus, magic, or constitution. Remember, with constitution, my plan is to definitely get it to 99. And right now, my magic is like 92 or something like that. But this is the one thing you, you want on your weapon. You want to get the attack bonus, the purple one, on the weapon. So try to do that. And your picture scrolls as well. I mean, that doesn't really matter. I think this is from Dream of the Strong. But it has Anima Charge. It has Amarita Earned. You know, if you can get a good one, you can get a good one. But I definitely think that this is the way to go. If you want to have an easy time, I would definitely recommend the Switchglaive. I definitely recommend the Warrior of the East. And I definitely recommend using the familiars and, of course, applying that confusion. It is super, super good, guys. Alrighty, well, I mean, that's pretty much going to do it for this build and, like, all my tips that I can give the newer players out there who are playing for the first time, either through the PC or maybe on the PS5. I really do hope that this video has helped you and that you have enjoyed it. If you have, will you please like the video for me? That definitely helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. And be sure to subscribe for future videos as well. And if you do subscribe, click the bell. That's super important on YouTube now. Thank you so much for watching, and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out.